ho, ho. We're driving it. Oh, oh no. There's no one driving this. I think it sort of drives itself. Right, well, I wasn't told that before I got in it. I don't like this tunnel. We've not really thought about the fun in funicular. No. Yeah. Oh. Do you want some Bass Country facts, James? Fact me up. They have their own language. Eascara. <laughs> Six different dialects. What? That's five too many. They say that the devil tried to learn Eascara. Tried it for seven years and he gave up. <laughs> what the? That, that one doesn't sound like a fact. Any questions, class? Yes, the devil. I was wondering, uh, is that masculine or feminine? That, that, that word? <laughs> nice to know the devil tries to better himself every now and again. You never, you never hear that about God. No. Arrogant. Yeah. Oh, hello. Please. After the three-minute ride of our lives, we arrive atop Mount Archanda for a spectacularly overcast view. Oh, James Acaster, look at Bill Bauer. I absolutely love it. Drink it in, Joe. It's kind of got everything. It's got a stadium, apparently voted in 2015 oh. as the best sports building in the world. Someone's not been to West Bromwich Albion, have they? <laughs> Look at that mad building down there. What do you think that is? I don't know, like an Airbnb? We're going there right now. It's the Guggenheim. The Guggen what? Let's Goog! Oh, that's good. Let's Goog. Right, the art's starting in two minutes. Can I tell you what it involves? Yeah, yeah. 1,000 fog nozzles. Oh, I don't think I've even seen 50 fog nozzles. Oh, there, there it is. Whoa, whoa! Oh, here we go. I can't really see where I am. I would say it's more mist than fog. I would say she's accidentally ordered some mist nozzles. If you're an artist and you come up with this idea, you've got to be pretty shocked when it ends up at the Guggenheim. Yeah. Here's my idea. Just get a bunch of fog nozzles and turn them on. Yeah. OK, well, I'll see if some local galleries are interested, if you're lucky. Good news. The Guggenheim has said yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is fun, isn't it? It's so efficient. 90 seconds and you're all done. They got free Wi-Fi as well. Who was connecting to the Wi-Fi for 90 seconds? You literally, by the time you got the password in, you were at the other end of the bridge. Yeah. They'll probably just show that bit in real time. That was fast. We didn't. After pointlessly travelling to and fro across a river, time for a drink in the old town. Dos. Calimochos. OK, perfect. Por favor. What did you just say to that man? I just gave him my number. As my personal sommelier never tires of telling me, a calimocho is the fave drink of the Basques, as well as any experimental teenager. A combo of red wine and Coke. Cheers. Cheers, John. Oh, that's dangerously lovely, isn't it? Mm. This is a bad thing to discover that I like. Yeah. You'd lose count pretty quickly. Yeah, I'd lose count, but I'd know something would, has happened because I'd probably have my top off. Call yourself Captain Calimochos. It's called Calimochos because on the 12th of August, 1972, a guy called Cali, who was yeah. running a festival, ordered a load of wine for it, and then the wine was disgusting. And um, he was like, how am I going to make this wine better? Whacked a load of coke in it. And mochos means ugly. Ugly Cali. Ugly Cali, the festival mm. scally. I would like a glass of wine and a glass of Coca-Cola. Yeah. So I can make them in my mouth. Thank goodness for the magic of television. Oh, look. Speak of the devil. Thank the you. The wine. Mmm. And the Coca-Cola. Should be careful Thank saying you. speak of the devil in Bilbao, actually. Thank you. Right. Here we go. There's a technique to it. Yeah, go on. Talk me through it. You've got to kind of do a Wallace and Gromit turtle kind of <laughs> mouth. <laughs> We've forgotten the crackers, Gromit. It works. It really looks good as well when you do it. Yeah? I feel like if we were on a date, that would have sealed the deal for me. Salud! You must be John. Yeah. Hello. I'm, I'm Jane. I'm, I'm good. good. How are you? And my dear friend John, who I've just met, suggests we start with the Basque take on tuna mayo. 
the drama. These were some of the most traditional pinches in San Sebastian. Yeah? You having a nice time? Oh, it's an extraordinary tuna mayo. Yeah? Mm. Mm. All day. We sluice down our appetizers with a dramatically poured cider. Uh, it makes it like a perfect pairing for this kind of food, yeah? Before moving on to grilled tuna with caramelised onion and marmitaco sauce. I'm going in. We're moving a little bit to the more modern style of pinches, yeah? yeah. Oh, my God. That tuna's cooked to perfection. Mm, mm, mm. I can't believe this is my life. This is life here. I could have been working in a leisure centre. Yeah. And look at me. <laughs> I don't think I would have made it through the interview process for the leisure centre, but... Congratulations to you. I'm happy for you. Although tempting to linger and hoover up everything on the counter, it's traditional to have a couple of pinchos and move on. Well, guys, so I'm going to take you now to a more modern style pinch of bars. Let's see how do you like this one. I'm already drunk, John. Let's go. We've only been to one place. Choo-choo! Bar number two is Cappadocia, and we dive straight in with their house speciality. He's in heaven. Yeah. It's like a really upmarket bag of frazzles. Mmm. Yeah. It's frazzle soup. Oh, eat that up. Yeah, that's good. Thank good you, John. isn't it? That yeah. is so good. Thank to frazzles. Guys. Frazzles. Frazzle <laughs> soup. Our bite-sized banquet continues with oxtail sandwich. Oh. What are you saying, James? Oh, man. Ooh. Oh. As you can see, we can go from traditional, simple bites mm -hmm. to fancy stuff, all in the same atmosphere. I love Very it. informal. I feel like I could be in my pants. Rioja fueled pants pants propels us onwards to Atari, where John forces us to eat caramelized French toast with vanilla ice cream. Mm. Mm. Oh, that crack, the best. That, the crack of the outside and the creaminess of the inside. Oh, five more, five more, please. <laughs> Oh, my God. It is actually insanely good. Wow. As we're rendered helpless in the face of Pinchos Put Paradise... <laughs> our tour concludes. John, you've changed my life. You've changed James's life. We've got to go now, but thank you for everything you've done. My pleasure. I'm high as a kite right now, John. I'm Come high on, as mate. a kite. Come on, mate. You... Take care, John. You too. Have fun, guys. Hello, old friend. Come on, mate. It's adios to my 5-2 and John. Bye, John. So we walk off our food with a stroll around nine tons of sculpted steel. This is called El Heine de los Vientos by Eduardo Chilida. He was a football player. Was he? In San Sebastian. Yeah, played for San Sebastian La Liga team. I wish more footballers did sculptures after they quit. You'd like to see David Beckham do a sculpture? David Beckham, if you remember those underwear adverts he did. Oh, a lot of they, sculpting they going on there. They sculpted. Very sculpted. Do you like them? I love them, actually. It looks do great. You? It's like when someone wears a fascinator at a wedding. Yeah. Also, here's what happens. Every time someone's wearing a fascinator to a wedding, this is their conversation with everyone all day. Oh, nice hat. It's a fascinator, actually. Yes, oh, they're called fascinators, aren't they? Yes. I wonder why. I guess because they're fascinated. <laughs> yes. You speak like you're from experience that you've worn a fascinator at a wedding. Once, once I wore a fascinator, sure. So this artwork's quite sort of visceral for you, then. You're stirring up a lot of emotions, actually. Back at that wedding, yeah. thinking, why am I wearing a fascinator? Why am I wearing a fascinator? Why am I at the wedding? I wasn't invited. I just bought a fascinator and then found a wedding. 